The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Hey folks, BQ here, Impact Lounge. Two things I want to speak on quickly because my time is precious these days. Most of you, 99% of you, have already read the articles about this online, but I still wanted to give my thoughts on the channel. And because my time is precious, we're going to talk about something else that I've wanted to touch on for a few weeks. And that was Matt Hardy saying he could see himself coming back to Impact Wrestling in a producer or creative role, something in that capacity. I'm going to talk about that, what I think making that statement means. But let's talk about this Impact WWE thing first. And of course, leave all your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Not too long ago, I talked about the meeting Impact Wrestling and WWE had. Initially, it was reported that Impact Wrestling was pitching ideas with WWE listening and that they were perhaps centered around getting some of their content on the WWE network. Crazy as some of these reporters will say anything and then do almost a 180 the next time they update us on the story. I believe this comes from PWI again, but it's been said that WWE actually requested the meeting and that Triple H was there. When it was previously said that he wasn't, but the meeting also did include Ed Norholm and Scott Demore. It was further stated that the meeting was built around bearing the hatchet between the two companies. If you want to hear my initial piece on this meeting, click the card above. Now, even though any kind of business between the two companies is good for Impact, let's face it, the reality of it, WWE gains nothing from getting along with Impact. Going out of their way to request a meeting, especially if it came from Hunter, is very fishy to me. There has to be some kind of underlying factor here. Perhaps they saw the success of All In and said, hey, maybe we need to get in Impact's good graces because they still have the second largest worldwide and social media reach in professional wrestling. That is something that cannot be debated. Now, there's some countries that for one reason or another, Impact actually does better than WWE, but that most likely comes down to accessibility, much like here in the United States, whatever network USA broadcasts them is much easier to access than Pop TV. Hunter strikes me as a guy that wants to play nice to people's face, but ultimately wants to put him out of business. And I think he strikes most wrestling fans like that. However, as I said, any business with WWE is good business at this point. Shit, they advertised the GWN for 30 seconds and it set a single day download record for the app. It's in their best interest to be in their good graces because the sheep will latch onto that. If Vince got on TV and told people to go motorboat their moms, they'd probably get up and do it. So what do you guys think? Do you trust WWE's intentions if they did, in fact, request this meeting? I guess we're going to have to see what happens next. Okay, so second part of this. Matt Hardy seems to be retiring from his in-ring career. He's in good terms, or he's on good terms with Anthem now, and he said that he could envision himself returning to Impact. Now let's be clear. His ultimate intention is going to be to stay with WWE. Based off his prior interviews, I felt like Matt had intentions of perhaps getting an ownership stake in TNA or Impact one day. Because as a businessman, he may have bigger goals than just being hired by someone working for a paycheck. All this said, would you as a fan welcome Matt Hardy back? We remember back when he debuted the Broken gimmick. It took a while to get off the ground. We can all agree with that. Then there was a period where it was absolutely masterful. It was the hottest thing in wrestling. Problems arose when he used Impact's platform to monetize the gimmick in the indie world, but Impact didn't make a single dollar off him. That led to them ultimately trying to construct contracts that wanted a percentage of the workers' indie money. This, of course, led to a huge fallout. Jeff Jarrett got involved and things got ugly. But then the WWE fans who previously thought the Broken Matt gimmick was the worst gimmick in wrestling history started salivating at the idea of him coming back to WWE with that gimmick all of a sudden. Crazy how things change. He of course becomes Woken Matt Hardy and it's absolutely joke in comparison to Broken Matt and shocker, spoiler alert, the fans stopped caring two weeks later. Now could he offer something from an agent or creative standpoint to Impact Wrestling? Would the fans forgive him for how his wife blasted the company on Twitter? Last thing is, let me tell you what I think about what that statement ultimately shows us. It shows us that if somebody like him can say, yeah, I forgive, because Anthem and Jarrett played a role in this too. It's not just Hardy's fault. 
But if you can say, yeah, I can forgive. Yeah, I'd go back there. I'd work there. It sets the tone for what kind of business the current management conducts. It tells people that this is a new company with a new vision. And it shows us that more people are starting to say, yes, I would work for Impact Wrestling. All we can ask for is good business that makes the company successful and profitable for years to come. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and for more from the Impact Lounge, check out the videos below.